Hi loves, how are we doing today? I hope you're all great and having a wonderful one. If you're new, welcome. My name is Michelle and this is The Chic Luke, where we discuss fashion on a deeper level through the use of art theory and social sciences. So then we bring them together in order to develop your true personal style and view fashion past the traditional surface value it's taken up because it's far more than meets the eye. If this sounds good to you, please subscribe or if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for joining me here again today for discussion all about denim, which is such a staple I feel in everyone's wardrobe. No matter your style, I think we all have that one pair or just in search of it that fits like a glove. You look as good as you feel in them, you're very beautiful and handsome. It can go with everything and anything in your closet. Maybe you reach for it on a day-to-day -day basis, sport it leisurely, or even on a special occasion. But when you go shopping and try to replicate this feeling of another pair or find that perfect pair, it's so difficult because denim is one of the most common pieces in fashion. Even at the same fashion house, there will be such a range of offerings between silhouette, cut, washes, and so on. So in this video, through the five simple steps to take, you'll be training your eye for visuals in order to curate the perfect pair of jeans in no time. For step one, you'll be choosing your wash through color psychology. For step two, selecting your style to meet your aesthetic goals in terms of silhouette, cut, and variation. Next, for step three, you'll be deciding on your design elements in order to meet your aesthetic preferences. Four, you'll be ensuring the correct fit to embrace your body or build new lines that you love. And finally, last but not least, step five will be picking out the material for the ultimate comfort and longevity. You'll never go into a dressing room again and not be able to pinpoint what is off of the denim. Rather, you'll be able to say, the pocket placement isn't right or my inseam isn't right. And you'll be able to use this to find the perfect pair. So let's begin, shall we? Step one is the wash of your denim. And we're going to use color psychology for this. So I want you to think about what your look says about you. What look are you going for? Are you refined? Are you graceful? Are you feminine? Are you edgy, cool, masculine? If you're having trouble putting a label on it, don't fret. Just think about your overall color scheme and this will work as well. Darker wash is more polished, timeless, and sophisticated. The darker you go with your wash, the more formal the denim can be. It's the most versatile piece for any wardrobe because you can build an outfit seamlessly with it. It has this day to night appeal as well as a natural streamlined effect if this is something that you're looking for. Darker washes of denim actually have a little bit of an edge on a trouser. People often think of trousers as the most versatile because you can dress them up or down, but denim is the same way with more of a range because of the washes. The washes will always change the formality and refinement of the piece, but the material will always allow for this laid back, nonchalant, and selfish share tone. Their washes and white diamond are a casual down-to-earth offering. They're very clean and crisp in spring and summer and have a brightening effect in autumn winter. This is perfect for the right occasion if you have a more casual style or a lighter overall color palette to your looks. You want to break your color scheme because even though shades of blue count as a color, it can serve as a neutral depending on how you style it. It is important to note that the lighter they wash, the more casual it will become until you cross over into shades of white and off-white. It completely strips away the utilitarian aspect of the denim found in the origin, history, and heritage of the piece for a completely elegant appeal. Just keep in mind your other pieces when styling to create the look that you are going for. Once you decide on your wash, Make sure it matches your tone. If you need help with this, I have a personal style analysis guide on seasonal color palettes. If you are in need an assistance of matching your denim to your tone. With the wash determined, you'll be able to filter out right away what doesn't catch your eye. If you're looking at a clothing rack, you can disregard, oh, I don't want the light wash, I don't want the dark wash, and it will narrow down the search drastically. Or if you're simply shopping online, you can use the filters. Now for step two, which is determining your style. At the base of the hierarchy, we have the four fundamental silhouettes, which are classic, slim, full, and a hybrid that can be mixed and matched to create new visual appeals. On the second level of the hierarchy is a spectrum of cuts, starting with skinny, flare, boot cut, to straight, boyfriend, mom, and wide leg. There are variations on each at the top of the hierarchy, and you can choose between tapered and relaxed to get the fit that works best for you and your wardrobe. For example, the light wash. This is a straight silhouette with a boyfriend cut that tapers down the leg. The black denim holds the same silhouette and cut, but has a relaxed variation that drapes along the leg. 
on the spectrum of cuts and silhouettes, straight is the neutral. And as you go off to either side, you begin to carry different connotations with your look due to the history, origins, and purpose of the piece. So if you opt for a flared pair, this is usually related back to the 70s. You'll add in this carefree, youthful essence to your look. Even if you're not doing a completely 70s themed look, this may be perfect for you if you enjoy boho or vintage fashion, for instance. Timeless option for both women and for men is to do a combination of classic, relaxed, and striped with a rise that matches your body type. If you're someone who has an hourglass, striped, or carrier weight in your lower body, mid to high rise will mirror your natural lines best. Since your body has more definition at the waist, the jeans can sit most harmoniously there. Lower rise may be worn, of course, if this is your preference because there are different variables to take into consideration such as bone structure, body fat percentage, and muscle mass. So it will look different across different body types. But if you do tend to carry your weight this way, just keep in mind there may be gapping or slipping in the back and you may need to alter or go to a tailor to get this fixed in order to get that perfect fit if it fits everywhere else. If you carry your weight in your upper body, have wider shoulders or soft narrow lines, mid to low rise will follow your natural lines. Since you have more definition at the hips, this will allow jeans to flawlessly sit there. High rise may be worn, just be conscious of how the pants may drape across your hips. And again, if you do prefer high rise and have this body type, just be aware it may look a bit boxy. And this may be something you're actually going for because it's not always about doing what's best recommended for your body type. There's this very know the rules to break the rules aspect to it. Using myself as an example, I'm very narrow and frame. So I typically wear low rise. When, when I wear high rise, it distorts my body lines and I can actually create looks I cannot otherwise pull off. You know, when you look at an outfit and you love it, but then you try it on and something feels a bit off, it may just be that you need to build on the silhouettes a little bit. You can do high rise and get a curvier look or a more androgynous look. It's all about how you play with those lines in order to create the outfit you're wishing to wear that day or the look that you're the most comfortable with. So you can really do this to your heart's content and find what feels the best for you. Now that you've decided on the overall style of your denim, we're going to play with design elements. For the front pockets you want it to be, in line with your hip bone and end at the center of your side, no matter they rise low or high. By doing this pocket placement in the front, it creates more of a symmetrical look. And by this, it will not create a new focal point at the hips. If you do wish for a focal point at the hips, of course, you can add different embellishments to the pocket or do different lines that will create a heavier visual weight. But this is the most neutral and versatile that can be maximized for any look. Back pockets, though, are really where you get to play with that placement. Pocket placement really changes how your body is perceived, and there's so many people who will try on denim and think, oh my gosh, I can't believe I look like this, and you don't look like this, it's just the dimensions that jeans are creating on your body. Or they put on denim and they go, oh wow, my bum looks really good, normally I don't look like this, and the truth is you're just wearing denim that actually embraces your body or creates your aesthetic goal. If you're someone who just wants jeans that are very true to form, have your pockets completely Completely centered. If you want a more lifted look, you want those pockets to sit a bit higher and actually inward because it will create further dimension rather than sitting completely flat against you. If you want to look a little bit smaller or flatter, you want that pocket to be bigger and sits a little bit lower than your natural lines. If you're wearing low rise, there isn't a lot of space to work with, so what you're going to do is allow that cusp of the pocket to barely, just barely touch, maybe about a centimeter or two, where your bum will meet your leg. This will create the most attractive look. Now the next design element to consider is how distressed your denim is. If you're someone who doesn't enjoy distressed denim, this is actually the most timeless option. But if you are, you need to pay attention to how it is distressed. Is it tied to a trend? Is it tied to a different era? Think about this because it will date your look to that time. If you are someone who happens to have an insecurity here on your leg, be sure to not actually get distressed denim because it will bring this new focal point downward onto your leg and it will draw the eye visually down because you're increasing your visual interest on your legs. But you can also use this to detract away from insecurities. Say you're maybe a bit self-conscious of your calves, you can have a distressed piece on your denim at the thigh and this will draw the eye upward. See how it can be used to your advantage. Always think about this. 
The final design element to consider is what your closure will be. There's two options typically, which are the button fly and the zipper. Button flies are the traditional closure for denim. They have higher durability and provide a sturdy structure. They actually also have this more natural old school look, depending on how the denim ages around the buttons. But if you are opting for a button closure and you are a bit self-conscious of your stomach area, maybe opt for a zipper because it will add this bulk at certain angles. And maybe if you're taking a photo, you won't like how it comes out. You will go, I'm not that big. Why do I look this way? It is because of the mass added by those buttons. The zipper fly lays completely flat and is a modern closure. It gives a bit more of stretch and convenience. It's not necessarily a design element that you can see, but it will determine how your pants lay across your form. Now that you have the concept of your denim in terms of aesthetics and laid the groundwork for your perfect look, it's time to get that perfect fit and do measurements. The first measurement you need to know is the rise, which is defined as the distance at the very top of the waistband to the end of the crotch seam. The rise is the most important measurement to keep in mind because if you alter this, it will change the entire construction of the garment. It's not something you can easily tailor, and if you do tailor it, you have to take it to someone very skilled, and you won't come out of it with the same look that you have originally purchased and liked. It may turn it into something you're not necessarily fond of. So it's better to get the perfect rise, and you can also also alter different areas of it. This measurement will provide you with your regular rise, which will sit at your natural waist. If you add one or two inches up, you will have your perfect high rise. It will look very elegant, very sophisticated, and sits very well on your frame. Or you can detract one or two inches to get the perfect low rise that will harmoniously fit on your body. On the subject of rise, I feel very obligated to touch on this, even though it's something that just leaves a bad taste in my mouth, and that is to talk about the muffin top. So many times people try on denim and they become very upset with themselves, they feel something is wrong with their body, and this is not the case at all. I know it's cliche to say, but it's a classic for a reason. The clothes are meant to fit you, not the other way around. I know this can be difficult for some people to handle, but say you go to a jewelry counter and a ring doesn't fit to you. You often say, oh, I need a bigger size, I need a smaller size. You don't beat yourself up inside because you don't fit that ring, you just get another ring. It is the same thing with denim. And this actually happens because of the line to body interaction of the fabric. And this happens in all our clothes. If you wear something like a push-up bra, it pushes you up. And this is just an area you wish to be pushed up. Your hips may not be an area you wish to push up, so you shouldn't be upset with yourself when it happens, it just means that denim doesn't fit you properly. This is one of the reasons why I stress the importance of knowing your specific measurements, because vanity sizing is very real. Even in my own closet, I have such a range of sizes in my pants, but if I were to stack them all on top of one another, they look roughly the same size, they just may look a bit different due to the design, but overall, the measurements of each are exactly the same, it's just the label that may have a different number. So don't be too hard on yourself, be kind to yourself, especially over something such as denim, it's really not not supposed to be something that makes you feel bad, it's all about finding what makes you feel good. So on this note, let's move on to the inseam measurement, which is the distance between the inside of your thigh and the protrusion of your ankle bone as a rule of thumb. This creates an absolute finish and determines how the leg to pant interaction along with the overall drape in proportion to the leg will sit. They differ from jeans to jeans, an inch or two depending on the design and material. But having your personal NC measurement makes choosing a pant so much easier. The NC measurement is actually the easiest to alter. You could take it to a tailor, you can hand sew, or even style it through cuffing, rolling, or stocking. You want to keep in mind the type of shoes you wear as well when determining your inseam. If you wear flat shoes very often, you don't want that drape to go over, so you want to be very true to form with your measurements. You also want to keep in mind if you enjoy stocking, which is when you do a small pile of folds right at the ankle, that it will create a new visual point and distort the perception of the silhouette of the shoe. Someone who likes that oversized draping look or enjoys wearing heels, you can actually create elongating effect 
for the use of draping with your inseam. So what you want to do is create a clean and crisp line across your shoes. If you are wearing, say, three inch heels, you can add two inches onto your inseam. If you're wearing four, you could add three inches and allow the pant to drape over the shoe. Some people who want their heels to show completely and you could do a sock with a dark shoe will create a streamlined effect as well without the use of draping. But for a more fluid and delicate to peel, you can allow that to simply drape along your shoe and allow the shoe to peek out from the trousers. Fabric interacts with your body comes into play with this. So think of your wardrobe and which type of shoes you have and what type of look you're looking to create. Do you want a clean, crisp, and polished look? Do you want a more cool, oversized, and relaxed look? Or do you wish for a delicate and dainty look? Now last and certainly not least is step five, material, which is what will make this tangible. So rigid denim, it's made of 100% cotton and these jeans are typically created with denim straight from the manufacturing facility without being treated or touched. So they will be a bit snug at first, hence the structural and rigid lines that are moldable over time. Depending on how you wear them and how they age will change how they relax and fit. So it's a bit like breaking in your shoes. Stretch jeans are typically made of cotton and polyester and contain various degrees of stretch content. This refers to the micro, elastate, and spandex yarns utilized in manufacturing of this denim that will create a range usually between one to four. This percentage refers to how much it will expand from edge to edge or across the grain. Also important to note is that stretch content jeans usually have curves already built into the design. So if you've ever noticed when jeans are able to be stretched, they'll have a slight curve at the hips. Typically straight denim will be laying very flat and it's more rare that there will be curves in this design because those are meant to be broken in. It's one of the reasons why people experience chafing or find that their jeans are more worn out at the top rather than the bottom. So keep this in mind if you are someone with curves, opt for the ones that have that built in curve or if you have more angular bone structure get something more straight this way you will have those lines embraced on your body and you won't find any gaps or you won't be stretching them out in a way that feels uncomfortable and this concludes the guide to denim next time you go shopping or try on a pair of jeans you will definitely be able to find the perfect pair for you so i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please subscribe like turn on notifications and comment thank you so much for watching